armchair conquistadors, let me take you on a journey to a land shrouded in history, a land of extremes, the highest mountains and the other opposite of that, the birthplace of Buddha, and your next most grammable pick. Nepa. With me. Okay, that was hard to be that cheesy. <laughs> That's me, Monet. As a white woman who likes to travel, I'm incredibly unique. And after traveling solo to almost 50 countries, I'm ready to show you how it's done. So join me on my trips. Who knows where? I first came to Nepal in 2012 and something just clicked. Nepal is the farthest away where I feel the most at home. This is my fifth time in the country and I've never been trekking. So on this trip, we will be doing a nine day trek up to Annapurna Base Camp. Nepal is a relatively tiny country sandwiched between two giants, India and China. When we hear about Nepal in the Western media, it probably means there's been an avalanche or an earthquake, which partly explains why when I told people I would be traveling there alone, some of them were very concerned. But Nepal is a great place to visit as a solo traveler, which is a bit ironic as the country didn't even allow foreigners until the 1950s, and even then, getting a visa meant a personal invitation from the king of Nepal. Nepal is probably best known as being home to Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. But it's also home to seven more of the tallest mountains, including Annapurna, whose base camp me and my team of three crew members will be trekking to. We're starting our trip off in Patan, which is its own city but is so close to the capital, Kathmandu, that it's almost like a suburb of it. Tomorrow is an election in Nepal, meaning that all stores and government offices will be closed, so we have just today to get everything that we need in order to leave tomorrow. So the fastest way to get around Kathmandu is on motorbike, but if you have more than two people or a camera crew, not that feasible. So instead, you take a taxi, but the streets are super narrow. And as you can see, the walls are very close. Our first errand is to get trekking permits. For this trip, we need two per person. One for general trekking, and the other to enter the Annapurna Conservation Area. Get to the tourism board when it opens at 10 a.m., and it should be pretty simple. We got it! Let's go! Now we're heading back to Patton to meet up with a Nepali trekking guide to get some last-minute advice before we set off for the mountains. And here we have Serena with us. You do some pretty cool stuff. Serena Rai is the first Nepali woman to be a certified ropes access technician. She's a leader in the Kathmandu punk rock scene, and she's a single mom. Basically, she's a badass. So can you like talk about the punk scene and what it's like here? It's pretty male dominated, I would say, uh, but still, me being probably the oldest punk in town, <laughs> it's quite funny, I guess, that I happen to be a woman. Okay, so do you have any advice for us? We're about to set off Annapurna Sanctuary Trek. Enjoy yourself. Um, of course, there's gonna be moments where you're gonna be pushing yourself to the limit, but take it slow. Don't listen to your obsessive egos too much and listen to what's safe first. Awesome, check your ego at the door. <laughs> With Serena's sage words in my mind, I wake up the next morning excited to set off. Now that we've gotten everything that we need in Kathmandu, I'm ready to go find myself on a Himalayan mountainside. So we were supposed to be taking one of these buses to Pokhara, which is where we will start the trek. But because of the election, the roads have been shut to traffic for the day, so the only way to make sure that we can get to the trailhead on time is to rent a private car and drive through the night. We are in the car heading to Pokhara. The streets have been closed for most of the day. They seem to be open now, but we're stuck in some traffic. Oop, we just started moving. There's a lot of dust and a beautiful sunset, and we'll see how long it takes us to get there. It took a long ass time. Because the roads had been closed, everyone else who couldn't drive during the day was also driving through the night meaning most of the ride looked a lot like this. But we made it, with me looking only a little worse for wear. And from Pokhara, it was just one Celine Dion sing-along away to the trailhead at Fetty. 
Okay, we just arrived at the trailhead and we are heading up to ABC and a front of base camp. We should get there in about six days. <laughs> the trek up to ABC will take us to 13,350 feet above sea level. The path is relatively well marked, so a guide isn't necessary, though their expertise can add a lot to the experience. We decided to go it alone, carrying our own bags and planning our course from recommendations we found online. On day one, we hike through terraced farmland for four hours until we reach the village of Potana, where we'll be spending the night. We're doing tea house trekking in Nepal, which is where you trek from village to village, staying at tea houses along the route, that, where you can get a hot shower, food, a bed. Tomorrow we have an eight hour day to get to Jinudana, where there are hot springs. Cha -ching. Whoa, the fog is really coming in right now. So we'll give you a little tour of our tea house room. It's pretty cozy and might get pretty chilly tonight. Good thing we brought sleeping bags. <laughs> Got it. Welcome to paradise. Okay, this is our room. Pretty basic, two beds and a light bulb. And then we'll show you our, our nighttime security. We close this. Ta-da! <laughs> and then coming out here, we have a nice little bed to look out at our forest. And then there's a shared bathroom on the floor. Pretty decent. Once you stop moving, you get cold pretty quickly. And since there's little to no heating available, you're gonna wanna pack plenty of layers and probably wear them all to dinner. Which is what I was doing when it happened. Do you have a tampon? Oh, fuck. Has Aunt Flo ever showed up in inconvenient locations? Join Monet in this next segment as she tries to find tampons in remote areas of the world. We have found pads, people. I repeat, we have found pads. Tampon cha? Tampon china? Pad cha, right? Mm -hmm. Arco, tipo, no, that's mm -hmm. not Nepali. No, China. Um, one Snickers. Who needs tampons when you can have chocolate? Thank God I got my period panties. <laughs> when women are menstruating, they have several options, including tampons, pads, or period panties. Yes, like a diaper, but for blood. But not everyone has access to or can afford these necessary items, meaning that for many women all over the world, getting your period can hold you back from thriving at school, work, and in the community. Okay, back to Nepal. Me and my blood diaper were making our way through the Himalayas. One of the awesome things about the ABC trek is that it takes you through a lot of different landscapes. So on day two, the path leads through dense forest greenery with these huge waterfalls that feed into the Modi Kola River. The bridges range from epic metal suspensions to little more than rock and wood lashed together. And the whole time we're walking up and down these narrow stone steps on the side of a mountain, sharing the path with all kinds of traffic. Those donkeys, hey, pushed us off the path, which is very rude and then farted all the way down as they passed us. In the wake of this odiferous flatulence, we arrive in Jinudanda and immediately go to sleep. Or try to. We've got some Nepali fire whiskey induced rocking out happening right outside our door right now. I actually like this one. Jinu is best known for its hot springs. I used the 20 minute walk downhill to thank the period gods for blessing me with a light enough flow that morning to enjoy a moment of steamy zen. Okay, this is pretty nice. <laughs> Do not come at the end of your trek at night because this place was filled with probably 20 people in each tub. So it is just after 7.15 in the morning. It is just us, no one's here. The water's much warmer. You can see the steam rising off of the water with these, the rapids of the Modicola behind us. Worcester City. You don't have to do my hairy leg. Oh, he's gross looking. Bring some soap and make a shower out of it because if you're anything like me, this will be the only one you take on the trek. Come early in the morning. 
skip out the crowds, and it's so nice. After toweling off and loading up, I hit the trail refreshed but trepidatious. Today is the day that all ABC trekkers fear. The day of the Chomrong Steps. I'm taking a break on the longest set of stairs I've ever climbed. That mountain is Machu Puchare, which is considered sacred by Nepalis, so no hikers, no trekkers are allowed to summit it. Machu Puchare means fish tail, because it kind of looks like a fish tail. Okay, I should go. Everyone's going to worry that I fell off the mountain. On the third day of trekking, your body is tired. Yeah. Things hurt. My calves are talking. What? And now, you have to hike almost 2,000 stairs to reach the village of Chamra. Namaste. We were warned about these steps. But like nothing compares to actually going up them. I made it, barely. It was so painful. These fucking Chamrong stairs. I like almost want to cry. That was so hard. But at the end of this excruciating day, there is something so special waiting for you at Chamrong Cottage. In 2010, an undercover reporter for Time Magazine ate this Didi's chocolate cake and voted it Asia's best. And the fact that it takes over two days to get to it hasn't stopped thousands of people from traveling to Chamrong just to taste it. Didi has invited us into her kitchen to see how she makes her amazing, famous chocolate cake. Let's go! My English is very poor, please no, try to no, understand. No, no, your English is better than my Nepali. Yeah. Nepali Ramro China. Ramro Cha. <laughs> As one of the couple, they told me, you are the very famous house of the Time magazine, you know? <laughs> And I said, oh no, it's still, it's still I, I don't have idea, we're here. Oh, you never know. Then they told us, they come Nepal in holiday. And they look in blog, they find the Time magazine in my cake. Then they decide we're going to go Annapurna because of cake and time. <laughs> say. They come here, they say, come through. My some, thinking was yeah. very much the same. Oh, really? <laughs> i never been in Tilezu or Everest, uh, my plan. Oh, go, nice. please, I like go. You like the mountains? Mountain very much. I've been ABC four times. You've I been like ABC four, four times. times? And we go there pray. I'm Buddhist. Mm -hmm. We go pray with the monk. Mm -hmm. Then do flag or reading and praying, then back. Then also next June I'm going to again. With Didi's kitchen being situated on the side of a Himalayan mountain, she's had to get pretty resourceful, using non-perishable ingredients like powdered milk, custard powder, and even lemonade mix for that perfect hint of citrus. So we made this chocolate cake late last night, so I fell asleep before it finished baking. But what's better than cake for breakfast? It was pretty freaking good. Especially after a day of hiking when all you want is like the sugariest, most delicious food ever. Fueled by chocolate cake, I set off from Chamra. Day four takes us through dense forests of bamboo and rhododendron, which you can catch in bloom if you go during springtime. Up we go! <sighs> Namaste! Six hours later, we arrive at the village of Himalaya, where almost everything goes wrong at once. So we've run into a little bit of a snag. We just found out that there is a group of 200 people that's 120 uh, Malaysian hikers plus 20, 60 porters, plus 60 porters who are trying to set uh, a Guinness World Record for the most people to reach Annapurna Base Camp. And they are booking up all of the tea houses up until base camp. There are two base camps. You reach Machu Puchari Base Camp and then head up to Annapurna Base Camp and they've booked up both of them. There might not be space for us. Uh, we also ran out of money. And I'm sure whoever's watching this right now is shaking their head at to how we did that. Um, so on top of this, my producer here, who's also been working as my camera woman, um, has hurt her knee uh, pretty badly, and we aren't sure she'll make it up to base camp. So Faced with these obstacles, I take some time to think about our options. What are you doing? My uterus. <laughs> it hurts so much. Oh, nope, that's just me with cramps. 
It's just after six in the morning right now. We got up super early to try to beat the group, trying to beat the Guinness World Record. My producer is going to leave us today to head very slowly back down the mountain. The rest of the team, three of us, are going to walk it up to NBC Base Camp tonight. Dropping our stuff at NBC, with much Puchari Base Camp along the way. And Aaron from Colorado is our American savior who gave us money even though we couldn't pay power immediately because the internet sucks. This breakfast goes out to Aaron. Aaron, who we just met on the trail, also bandaged my blister because she is a wilderness angel. After hugging my producer goodbye, I set off as quickly as possible, trying to reach MBC before the group of Malaysians so we might have a chance of getting a room. Of course, at 10,000 feet with thin air and frigid temperatures, no one is going anywhere fast, and it wasn't long before we ran into our competition, who were so nice and excited about trying to break a world record since that's really fucking cool. And spoiler, they did it. We have made it to NBC. We've dropped our packs and we are heading up to Annapurna Base Camp. That beauty up behind me. We are all feeling the altitude, just taking it slow. And now we just have an hour to two hours until we hit ABC, where we'll get some tea and then head back down to NBC to spend the night. Also, this seems as good a time as any to talk about the fact that I haven't pooped in four days. I really expected to be doing a segment on travel diarrhea, and uh, we might have to do one that's kind of about the opposite. This is the final push. We are now hiking in the Annapurna Sanctuary, which is a glacial basin surrounded by a ring of mountains, most of them over 23,000 feet. We've been a... Uh trekking for five days, going pretty hard every single day. My calves kind of feel like they have knives in them that sort of get like twisted a little and every step we have to go up and there are a whole lot of steps on this trek. Literally just one step in front of the other at this point. We had to push hard today to make it to ABC, gaining over 3,000 feet in one day, which puts us at risk for things to go wrong. Okay, we lost uh, one team member to what seems to be symptoms of altitude sickness, so we best for her to just go down back to NBC, uh, make sure that she's feeling healthy for tomorrow, which means that from four, we've been knocked down to two. Every breath feels like its own battle by this point, and I'm doing what I can to keep my mind alert as my body just puts one foot in front of the other. Fucking calves. Kind of sounds... It kind of sounds like there's a helicopter in my head, like the whoo, 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 whoo. it's just blood. Whew. Almost there. Actually, almost there. Okay, these are literally the last steps until the top behind me, which is really good news. I made it! Okay, I'd like to take all this shit off. We are up here at Annapurna Base Camp um, drinking some hot masala tea which is sweet and spicy and really hitting the spot with this insane... Oh my gosh, look, there's like an avalanche! Look at that! Okay, take two on that. <laughs> I have to say, I'm like pretty surprised at how the altitude affected me. I was moving very slowly. I'm gonna have some veg noodle soup and just enjoy the view for a bit. This is amazing. And so we made it! 13,350 feet at the base of the Annapurna Range. I eat my noodle soup and watch the fog roll in. And now all we have to do is go all the way back down. Luckily it's easier to lose altitude than gain, but I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna hurt. I only packed one outfit because I wanted to save room for camera equipment. So I'm now on day six of wearing the same clothes. I smell pretty bad. Yeah. We are all very happy to use our injured producer as an excuse to get to a shower as soon as possible. Okay, we have booked it down the mountain. We're gonna hop in a Jeep now and go back to Pokhara and we will have done a nine day trek in seven days. Woof, everything hurts. And there you have it, from chocolate cake to mountain peaks and back again. 
There's a lot of good stuff to see in our world. So get out there. But before you leave, we've got fan mail. Yay! Over the past 10 minutes, we have been inundated with fan mail asking us your most pressing questions, some of which were frankly inappropriate. My producer just handed me three questions picked at random, written down on a plane ticket. Kenny from Alabama wants to know, how many frickin' Snickers did you eat on this trip? I have been finding Snickers wrappers in very unusual places. Let me just put it that way. Sally from London says, you go girl. Thanks, Sally. Judy and Jeremy from South Africa want to know, where are you going in the next episode? Great question, Judy and Jeremy. Subscribe to find out. If you would like your question to be answered on our show, email us at we're still working on the title for this travel series featuring a female host at AOL.com. It's been a pleasure spending time with you. See you next time. Who knows where? Do you want to watch the sunrise with me? Let's go out and see what we can.